Well, hey, family, and welcome to Coffee and Kathy. This is Steph from the Grief to Great Day podcast. You're listening to our weekly devotional episode. Now, Kathy, she was the sister of one of my best childhood friends. Each year in the summer, she would tag along when we went swimming or skateboarding, and in the winter, it was sledding. Now, some days that was okay, but some days we didn't want the little sister to hang around. Now, as we all grew up and I moved to North Carolina, I saw very little of her. Then in 2021, over four decades after those summer and winter activities, I heard that not only had she become a children's pastor and lived in Guatemala teaching missionary children English, but she had also gotten cancer. She returned to the States. Her sister began caring for her, but within a couple of months, at the age of 50, she died. Now, what I learned after that made me really sad that I didn't know her better as an adult. See, God wasn't a part of her life. He was her life, and her impact on others was great. These weekly devotionals are a way for you to get quiet, grab some coffee, tea, or a green smoothie, and just listen as I read from Kathy's blog entitled Learned Along the Way. She was incredibly wise, funny, and a fully committed Christ follower. Grief, you know, the thing you're going through right now, it is the hardest thing you'll ever face. So don't let anyone ever diminish that. But let's also not diminish the power of God's word and the transformational healing he will do in your life. I'm a living testimony of going from pitiful, what I defined as brokenhearted years of tears, angry at God in the world, overwhelmed and confused, to powerful, what I defined as peaceful, joyful, and strong in my trust, hope, and faith in God. You're not alone, and your day does not have to be your forever. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. So all you need to do now is be still and just listen. My new eating plan. I've decided to try a new eating plan. It goes something like this. I'm only going to eat foods prepared by others, restaurants or other prepackaged prepared foods, snack foods mostly, and of course I will only eat from places I like or are the most convenient. I'll try to get in some of those home cooking places once in a while, a real sit down meal, but I know my life. Most of the time I will be swinging through a drive through window or running into a convenience store. I will get one full meal a week though. Well, if I have time and nothing more important comes up, but it still won't be anything I've cooked. After all, I've never been to cooking school. I can't possibly know how to put a real meal together. I'll have to depend on others. And if they throw in additives or preservatives, I won't worry about it. After all, I'm not a chemist either. I don't know what that stuff is, but surely it won't hurt me, right? Along with my new eating plan, I've decided to follow a similar workout plan. I'm only going to work out four times a year. Holidays mostly, when I have time off. And my mother's birthday, because I know that will make her happy. Okay, maybe more than four times a year, but no more than once a month. That is all my schedule can handle. And at least I'm working out some. That has to count, right? Are you horrified yet? Of course, that is not my new eating plan. It would literally kill me to do that. I know better than to only eat out, to only eat prepackaged foods, to not worry about the content of what I'm eating. And I know better than to starve myself between meals. I know better than to work out only sporadically. My body needs better than that. And so does my soul and yours. Eating out occasionally is fine. A great treat, even once a week is fine. Like listening to a great sermon, getting fed from it. Prepackaged food occasionally is fine, and it certainly is convenient. Like getting fed from sermons on TV or the internet, like online devotionals and other resources. But even in prepackaged food, quality counts. Reading the label matters. Being discerning in what you take in is important. Like listening to that online sermon with a discerning ear, making sure the speaker's words match what God says on the subject, or making sure that cute meme on Facebook actually matches God's word. 
If I really ate like my new eating plan, my body would suffer. My immune system would be weakened. Illness would wreak havoc. Because many Christ followers do use that spiritual eating plan, the body of Christ, his church, is suffering. Our immune system is weakened. And the illness of division, untruth, fractured lives, and shameful practices are wreaking havoc. And if I followed my new workout schedule, I would never grow muscle. I would grow, but I would grow flabby and weak. And because we are neglecting our meeting together, as in Hebrews 10.25, our muscles as a church are weakened. We are to be the light of the world, a city set on a hill, unable to be hidden. We are to be a body of believers working together for a common cause, sharing what we have seen God do in our lives with the dying world. Not lone rangers, not single flashlights, a great unhideable light shining together. That takes intentionality, that takes choosing, and that is not based on convenience, how I feel, or whatever better thing has come up. It is a choice to be committed. Just like I can choose to commit to working out regularly, which will result in great benefit for my body, I can choose to commit to gathering with the body of Christ regularly, which will result in great benefit for that body It takes discipline and commitment, but the payoff is great. Worshiping together, connecting together, growing together, serving together, and then sharing what we have seen, heard, learned, experienced in the house of God together. I have to be self-feeding, but I don't have to be a chef to do that, and I don't have to have a seminary degree to read God's word for myself. I do have to be connected to the community of Christ followers, but not because my church, the body needs me, but because I need the body. Praying that your spiritual eating plan and workout schedule are healthy and holy this week and beyond.